Clara over there as well. And then we are also on YouTube. Our YouTube page is Xylophone Media. Our Facebook page is Xylophone 102.1 FM. And in both cases, Xylophone is spelled Z-Y-L-O-F-O-N. That is Z-Y-L-O-F-O-N. That is what it is. Well, my name Black Rasta. And I apologize to you. Yes, our uh, transmission is a little murky today. It's a little noisy. Ah, we are dealing with that. All right, my brother, my sister, let's go straight up into action. Um, this is why we speak truth to power. We normally don't like to criticize, but if we must criticize, we would only criticize to build and not to destroy. My brother, my sister, this is it. And I'm going to begin with something that I'm taking from um, City News Rumor. And uh, this one was published on the 5th of December, yesterday, 2021. And it says, Forbes Africa Magazine names Akufu Addo as African of the Year. I read. Forbes Africa Magazine has named President Akufu Addo as its African of the Year. The magazine is a statement. In a statement, said, Ghana's president has repositioned the country in the global marketplace as one reliant on its own resources and strengths. Responding to the win, President Akuvuado told Forbes Africa that he was overwhelmed and thanked Forbes magazine for recognizing the work that we are doing here in Ghana. Past winners of this award have been President Paul Kagame of Rwanda, Akina Disena, the President of the African Development Bank Group, and the Director General of the World Trade Organization, Ngozi Okonjo Uyala. At a state dinner held in honor of the visiting South African President Cyril Ramaphosa, the African the South African president was full of praise for his Afghanian counterpart for being adjudged the African of the year. President Ramaphosa extolled the virtues of President Akufuad, which led to Forbes awarding him the prestigious African of the year crown. We are proud of this recognition. Your Excellency, because it speaks of uh, your commitment, it speaks of your creativity, your innovation, and your clear strategic vision of what should happen in your own country as well as uh, on our beloved African continent, he said. <laughs> now, my brother, my sister, a king who is sitting on the palanquin would never know that the ground is hot. Same way, the king who is sitting on top of the horse does not know that the ground is hot. To cut it short, my brother, my sister, he who feels it knows it. For us in Ghana, this is a useless award and we think that either Forbes Africa is making a mockery of us as a people or has been bribed, my brother, my sister, to extol the virtues of a villain. My brother, my sister. Now I want to take you back to what Forbes wrote. And I want to read it so that we assess that by our own selves. Forbes magazine in a statement said, Ghana's president has repositioned the country in the global marketplace as one reliant on its own resources and strengths. What a shame, Forbes Africa. I used to respect your magazine, but from when you chose this sleepy president as the African of the year, I know that you are nothing but a comic magazine. You are nothing but a useless magazine that does not research and that takes interest in mocking the African people. How can you come out and tell us well-meaning people, people with brains, that you are choosing this president because 
He has repositioned the country in the global market space as one reliant on its own resources and strength. For your information, Forbes Africa, the president has repositioned this country in the hands of the Chinese. The president has sold this country out to foreign invaders who come into this country and make a mockery of us. The citizens are not respected in any country. We are disrespected and killed even in the Gambia and nothing happens. Chinese people come into this country, make a mockery of us and insult us, destroy our water bodies and steal our gold and diamond and they are only put in aeroplanes, business class, to fly away back to Guangzhou. Nothing ever happens to them. And when we question them, they tell us that jailing Chinese invaders will not bring us money. Where is the repositioning in the marketplace globally? Where is the self-reliance on our resources? Forbes magazine is nothing but a comic magazine that has no respect for the African people. Look at what Paul Kagame is doing in Rwanda. Look how great Africans are striving night and day, my brother, my sister, to be able to put this continent on the global space. Nana Akufuado in the list is a man who is most unpatriotic, disrespects the legacies of Kwame Nkrumah, looks down on us as a people, as Forbes magazine is recognizing him as the African of the year. There are strikes in Ghana right now. People are walking from their homes to work. All because of the carelessness of the government of your so-called great African. My brother, my sister, teachers are least respected. Farmers are judged as best farmers of the year. Are given nothing but toy bicycles and spray to go and spray only five centimeters of their farms. Is this the African of the year that Forbes magazine wants to sell to us? From when Forbes magazine mentioned this man who has been flying around the world in chartered private jets, taking a shower every second, my brother, my sister, and eating non Ghanaian and even non African food in the list. I knew that Forbes magazine. It's nothing but a stupid magazine. All the respect that I ever had for Forbes magazine faded out from when I saw this man's face on the cover of Forbes magazine. My brother, my sister, give us simple accountability. Give us an account of your flying around the world. Mr. President says it hinges on state security your minister of state security is still busily modeling in front of the cameras of prostitutes what is that state security you are talking about the last time we saw another prostitute in the private jet of the president taking selfies where is the security where is the african of the year mockery My brother, my sister, magazines like Forbes magazine, my brother, my sister, we have seen the ilk of these magazines in the past who took money from dictator African presidents and flashed their covers with such villains. It hurts me, my brother, my sister. In fact, the chief farmer's photograph should have been on top of Forbes magazine's cover photograph. But you put a president there, a sleepy dent, to mock us and to even insult us. He's wearing a suit. A suit that is tailored in France. His shoes are from Italy. My brother, my sister, even the glasses he wears, made in England. How can this be an African? Then on the front cover, on the cover of the Forbes magazine, 
You have a man like this on top of the cover. And when we talk, you send police to come and arrest us. When we talk, you threaten us with all your demonic gimmicks. I am so insulted. In Britain, the only thing when they see this photograph, the only thing African about it is the black face of the president, like my black face. Aside that, everything about this president is white. When he schooled in England, he comes from a bourgeoisie family. He is an aristocrat. When he speaks tree, it sounds like he's speaking English. Because he's closer to the English than to his own people. All the promises he made to us, he lied to us night and day. And right now he's going around apologizing for the mockery he slapped us as a people. How can this be the African of the year? If this truly is the African of the year, then Africa truly has useless leaders. Mugabe never became the African of the year on the Forbes cover. Yet he was a man that we all had so much respect for. He had his own bad sides. But he was a great leader. Gaddafi never became the African of the year. On the Forbes front page. Yet we all know. That he was such a great man. I am insulted. I feel very very traumatized. To see the face. Of this president. Whose penchant for sleeping. Is unparalleled. Anywhere in the world. Even all, 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 all Joe Biden can never compete with President Nana Akufu Addo over sleepiness. Nana Akufu Addo is permanently drowsed. He has a disease that is known as sleeping sickness. If you want the medical term, trypsonomiasis is what he's suffering from. I know you want me to repeat this. Trypsonomiasis, aka sleeping sickness, is what the president has. And this is the African of the year. His eminent sleepiness, Mr. Sleepy Dent. A man who suffers from trypsonomiasis. Every two seconds he's snoring. Is the African of the year. A man who makes promises. And he cannot fulfill them. A man who insults chiefs. A man who or two for Santini only last week. Complained to. About the erratic power supply in the Ashanti region and the rest of the country. Yesterday I slept in darkness. This is the African of the year. Why such mockery? Why are you insulting us like this? All the noise when you speak against them. Then they send demon policemen to come and pick you up and take you to hell. Threaten you so that you may simmer down. My brother, my sister, I'm going to buy 10 copies of the Forbes magazine. And set all of them on fire publicly. To send a message to Forbes. That next time they mock us like this. It will be worse. This is absolute foolishness. This is absolute nonsense. And this will not wash. And to make it even worse. His eminent sleepiness Mr. Sleepy Dent. Nana Kufuado. Has accepted the undeserved accolades. Oh, thank you for recognizing our hard work in Ghana. What hard work? Drivers are on strike. Next week, teachers are going on strike. Otun 4 is crying that all his budget gadgets have broken down. Farmers are being given toy bicycles as best farmers in Ghana. And you say that you are doing hard work. Where is the hard work? Stop this comic relief. My brother, my sister. It hurts me. That this is the man. Seen as the African of the year. 
It hurts me, my brother, my sister, that the so-called African of the year is dressed up in everything British, everything American, everything Italian. He flies all around the world eating nothing but Spanish and Italian foods. How can this be the African of the year? It hurts so bad, my brother, my sister, that when this man is even attending African business meetings, he's dressed like a European. And he goes to sit down there and speak like a British, eat British food, fly in a British plane, and come and sit down here to rule Ghanaian people, African people. What a mockery. To God be the glory. My prayer is that never shall we have a 77-year-old sleepy president amongst us. Never, ever, never again shall we have a suit wearing. Every occasion is suit. After all, he said it allegedly to WikiLeaks years back that he doesn't look good in African wear. Even though Basanjo looks good in African wear. Why do I use the word even? These are all, 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 all men. But when Abbas and Joe wears African suit, he looks perfect. You can blame Abbas and Joe for everything, but give it to him when it comes to his dressing. You can blame Yara Dua for everything. Give it to him when it comes to his African wear. You can blame even Buhari for all the insurgencies around, full of any insurgencies, Boko Haram and everything. But when he comes to his appearance, he's more African than this president. They go for AOU meetings, or the AU meetings, and all of them are wearing suits. Joker African leaders. Do you have brains at all? And you want your economies to grow? You are in a country whose temperature is almost 50 degrees Celsius almost every time. 50 degrees Celsius. We are, our brains are already frying. Then you go and wear a suit and sit down you are talking African that you want your economies to grow. You have no common sense. It's so hurting, my brother. You wear a suit and all that. And when you go on break, you go to eat British food. When are we going to grow, brethren? I give it to the Nigerian leaders, bad as they may be. My brother, my sister, everywhere they go, you know that these are not Europeans, they are Africans. They are dressing. Tells you straight away that no, these people are Africans. And when they open their mouths to speak, you know where they are coming from. They are nowhere near Britain. Nowhere near America. But when our president speaks, you know that this is coming from the original backbone of the aristocrats and the bourgeoisies from the West. These are neocolonialists. My brother, my sister, the ones Nkrumah talked about years ago. Mr. President, shame on you for taking this award and accepting it. Forbes Africa, shame, 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 triple shame on you. Your magazine is nothing but a toilet paper. Bow down your heads in shame. You have no, 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 nothing. I don't know what word to put in there. No shame. I'll leave it here. I've already tweeted to Forbes to ask them, what have we done to them for this insult? Those of you who follow me on Twitter, you have seen it. I have sent it to them. And I have sent it to Mr. President too. All of you bow down your heads in shame. What an award. What is this? African of the year. A mockery. An insult. Let it rest there. My brother, my sister, many more things for us to talk about today. And today, I am really broken. Broken, broken, broken. But we need to speak. I'm reading this from Ghana Web, and this one was published on the 4th of December 2021. It says, I will lead Kumasi people to demonstrate if Keta C defense project is captured in the 2022 budget. And this is coming from a minister of state, 
His nickname is Napo. Let's find out. Matthew Opoku Prempe, the member of parliament for Manchia South, has kicked against recommendation by the minority caucus in parliament that uh, the Keta Sea Defense Project to be captured in the budget uh, 2022 must be done. I'll take it again. Matthew Opoku Prempe, the member of parliament, Manchia South has kicked against recommendation by the minority caucus in parliament that the Keta Sea Defense Project be captured in the 2022 budget. Napo, as he is fondly called, says that it will be a mistake on the part of the government to include the project in the budget. He has threatened to mobilize residents of Kumasi to hit the streets and express anger against the government if the wish of the minority is granted by the government. The energy minister said on Asempa FM on Thursday, December 2, 2021, that Kumasi has been experiencing flooding over the years. And the government has made no special plan to address the issue. He also accused the Rawlings government of misapplying funds which were secured to fund the construction of the sea defense projects in the Volta region. Kumasi has been flooded four times, but I didn't see Kumasi in the budget. If the finance minister includes the Keta defense project in the sea defense project in the budget, I will vote for 0% E-Levy. So these are the fools that we have in Ghana. His name is Napo. These are the idiots that we have as ministers in this country. And I say that without apology. I used to have a lot of respect for this man. I met him once, twice when he came at the time that I was working with multimedia. In fact, they were in opposition at that time, if I'm not mistaken. And he used to come regularly on a political show. And he made a lot of sense. Time and again, I will meet him and shake hands with him and say, well done, sir. But I've lost it all for an idiot like this. You know why? This was the man who said, Nana Akufuado has done far better than Kwame Nkrumah when it comes to education in Ghana. This guy was the guy who said it. That Nkrumah had done far better my brother, my sister, hey, that, that, I beg your pardon, Nana Akufuado had done far better than Kwame Nkrumah when it comes to education in this country. This was the same idiot at the time that he was the minister of education. He was the same guy who said that Mahama had put people in a bus, in buses, to come to the independence square and play cantata. In other words, to collapse and pretend that it was the sun that was making them collapse. I heard later he apologized. I didn't hear it. The same Napo is a serious hater of Kwame Nkrumah. The bedrock on which this country was built. He again came back to tell us that when it comes to factories, Nana Akufuado has built more factories than Kwame Nkrumah. Their yardstick is Kwame Nkrumah. Their ancestors hated Kwame Nkrumah, bombed him night and day, my brother, my sister. And when he even escaped all the way to Guinea, they still sent people after him to finish him. They destroyed his statues. Even when Nkrumah died, they still chased his ghost. To bury him up. Finally. They still have hatred. For the people of Ghana and Kwame Nkrumah. Listen to the utterances of a bigot. Tribal bigot. I'm going to play his voice. This story did not even capture everything he said. What is the point Napo is making? Napo says that number one. The Rawlings administration secured money for building the Keta Sea Defense Wall and failed. For that matter, 
Another government should not go for money to build it. So the country is divided into political lines. Political blocks. If Rawlings went for it and he didn't do it, why is Rawlings' party not still in power? Because we were angry that they went for the money and blew the money away without building the Keta C defense wall. And we found it prudent to vote you in so that you'll be able to deal with the foolishness that Rawlings and his people brought us, true or false. But these guys have no brains. They do not know that they are in power because of another man's failure. They think that they are in power because it's a game of chess. It's time for them to be in power as against is a cue. So when one man goes, another man must step in. They soon forget that they are only there because of the failure of another man. So Rawlings went for the money, blew it away, we got angry and said, okay, NPP come in. Then you come and give us the same rot for which we kick these people out. And to make it worse, the idiot, Napo, is again saying that he's going to organize Ashanti people to come out and demonstrate because Ashanti has been having a lot of flats and blah, 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 and they are doing nothing. They didn't capture it in the budget and blah, blah. So if they capture this one, by all means, Ashanti people will come out and demonstrate. My brother, my sister, these are the people the police should be arresting and not Captain Smart. My brother, he is in flaming passions. Tribal, ethnocentric passions. Those of us who have read history, we know how the Anglos and the Asantis were at each other's throat from time immemorial. We know how the Achims and the Asantis have been at each other's throats from time in memorial, same way as the Fantis and the Asantis. So anything to do with these ethnic groups in flaming passions is worse than what Captain Smart said. Am I making sense? My brother, my sister, Keta Sea Defense Wall is more of a danger to the people than what is happening in Kumasi. They are all very important. But there is something we call priority in terms of emergency. I'll give you an example. Idiots need examples to understand things. My brother, my sister, my brother has a headache. Oh, my sister here has a deep cut around the neck and blood is oozing out. If there's only one chance for us to rush one person to the hospital, who would it be? The man with the migraine or the woman with a deep cut in the neck that has blood oozing out like a broken dam. But when it comes to tribal bigots like Napo, it doesn't matter. My brother, my sister, it is so appalling and when you listen to the tape, Napo says, the NDC is looking for a chance to have the Keta Sea Defense Wall built in their what? Stronghold. Political stronghold. So right now, it has become a game of strongholds and weak holes. Right? It is no more about the people. It's about the stronghold. My brother, my sister. So, Keta is the stronghold of the NDC. NDC did not build it. Any other government that will come in should rather go for its stronghold. Hallelujah. When Mahama went to build the Kejetia market, when Mahama went round, building it into a modern day market center, was Kumasi and has Kumasi ever been the stronghold of Muhammad's party? Can somebody explain? I'm so disgusted that this man, Napo, is still in power. If you have the so-called African of the year, 
going to Nana Akufuado. His eminent sleepiness, Mr. Sleepy Dead. Then he can sleep it off. This is nothing to him. If I was the president, this man would go home. When Canada Japan said, we should all look for sticks and hit the heads of Evers and kill them and blah, 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 trying to bring a war between the Ashantis and the Evers. We all watched and made it slip by. Nobody was punished. This is the same thing Napo is saying. Albert, he's not talking about stroke, sticks, cudgels, and so on and so forth. I am so disgusted, but I'm not surprised. This man has done it before. And he can say it again and again and again. I have no respect for people like this. I meet them and I walk away. I have no respect for tribal bigots like this. I look at them in the face and I don't blink. Because these are people who are nitwits. It's annoying, brethren. Minister of State. Listen to this bigotic statement. I'm going to play the tape. Listen to him. Listen to what the brother here is saying. My brother, my sister, listen to what he's saying. He is saying that it's all about the strongholds. And they will not do that. He's going to arrange. He has not apologized. And we don't expect him to apologize because even his boss did not apologize for insulting the flower chief. Listen. 16. I didn't see that in anywhere. I didn't see it. The two opposition were catching up with me. They are going to Sabe fa kita si defense issue. Comment se flood into Egypt? The finance minister is a mistake. Not the same. Which means they do comment se fall in demonstration. But would that be fair? Ah! He who comes to the equity table must come with clear hands. A government has brought a fair and a rational budget. Why should you hold the government to ransom? Some whole stronghold of financial budget. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? That they are holding the government to ransom. That the government should build their strongholds. Such a big art. Sometimes some of these people, I wonder where they got their doctorate from. Probably from under the sea. From brainless whales and sharks. Brainless whales and sharks where they are professors under the sea. No sense. Did you hear that? Did you hear that, brethren? And this bigot still says that, hey, if they build the Keta Sea port, I beg your pardon, the sea defense wall, or they capture it in the budget, he would vote for zero E levy. Do you know what that means? Ghanaians, learn how to break things down. When people speak, learn how to read between the lines. It means that the E-Levy is a government agenda. It is an agenda of the government that is most unnecessary, is totally partisan. Hey, am I making sense? Can I break it down so somebody can understand? The E-Levy, according to what Napo is saying, is a partisan government agenda. Not necessarily in the interest of the Ghanaian people. So he's saying, if you capture it in your budget, I will vote for zero E levy to hurt you, the party. Is anybody following me? Is anybody following me? It means they are going to vote for the E levy on partisan lines. Not the general well-being of the Ghanaian. They are going to vote for the E-Levy so the president with his pot belly and his oversized suit can still fly in private jets around and eat British and American food whilst me and you sit down at Nima waiting for Coco and uh, Kurikuri. Waiting for Tuozafi and me and Kuka and Nama Kifi. 
How many people are understanding what I'm saying, oh God? Give me the power to make people understand, oh Father. If the Qatar Sea Defense Wall is captured in the budget, I would vote for zero e, -le e levy. It means I will also hurt you. It is a party agenda. It is a 